this kimchi here. And I wanted to count down 18 of my favorite looks that's ever been on the runway of RuPaul's Drag Race. This is in no particular order, so I'm not playing favorites. Sharon Needles post up cap ba 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 ba. This look told the future queens on Drag Race that drag can be anything. She still maintains a perfect balance of femininity, but over the top cookiness, which is her brand. When she first came on the runway with the blood coming down, the game has never been the same since. This is a legendary look. Up next, we have Raja's Rococo slash Marie Antoinette look. Now, Raja's a runway queen and she has many, many amazing looks, but this look is probably the most conceptual, well executed, and high fashion look. The first time I saw that look, I was blown away. It made me want to do drag. And after seeing this look, I got a wig and I put on some lashes and I went out looking like a foot. Up next, we have Chanel's juggling look. This look, the outfit itself is so simple, but she's showing off her body and the fact that she had the guts, no pun intended, <laughs> to came on the stage of RuPaul's Drag Race juggling shows that she's got some skills, nerve, and charisma. I can juggle a burrito in my mouth, mm. in my stomach. Up next is Detox's black and white reunion look. She shit on everyone that was in that stadium that day. I mean, we all know that this look was the one that inspired the challenge on our season, the black and white challenge. At the time, no one had done anything like this before. Even just standing on the stage, she stood out. This really showed that white people can do anything with a highlight. Up next is my number one haters look. Trixie Mattel's bearded runway. This time, she decided to let it all go and actually wear a hair that wasn't blonde wig for a change. That's her actual beard. Up next is Pearl's Just That Eleganza. She may be a sleepwalker, but this is a look that I can actually sleep in on the plane. There's something about this look that looks really high fashion and sleek and yet very minimalistic and simple at the same time. Easy breezy. Aye. Up next is Raven's Harajuku look. Now, I'm not saying I like this look just because I'm Asian and I like Harajuku. I like this look because we're used to seeing Raven with her signature face and nude lips, but this look just takes it to the next level of what an amazing makeup artist she is. And the whole outfit ensemble with the houndstooth just looks so amazing and striking on the main stage. I scoot this look. Up next is Manila's Pineapple Runway. Now, Manila is known for her signature black and white hair with outrageous conceptual outfits that are usually in yellow. This look is probably like her most iconic look and this is the quintessential Manila outfit. I fruit this look. If I were to become any sort of fruit, I want to be a watermelon, plump, juicy. Next is Bianca's cheetah look. This is a classic Bianca silhouette, but there's a lot of thought that went into it with the cheetah stripes that's going down her face with really intense makeup and this is probably the most different that Bianca looked during her season. And just like all of her looks, very well executed and very polished. You know what tastes really good after a hard day of work? Pussy. Up next is all of Violet Tachki's look. Except for the green runway. Love you, girl. Violet, in my opinion, is on her way to becoming a fashion icon. I never see her phone in a look, and every single look that she does is so well thought out and very well put together. And she never looks bad. I don't think it's possible for Violet to ever look bad. The tartan reveal was amazing. Her crowning look. I felt so basic on the finale runway standing next to her in the similar silhouette. Her with her tiny waist, prosthetics. God, I can't even... I texted her like a week after finale, like I've been waking up every morning thinking about this look. It's probably like one of my favorite looks of all time, not just on Drag Queen, but ever. Her Hello Kitty was also amazing. I can't believe she made that. Obviously her Death Becomes Her is iconic with her 18 inch waist. Her waist is smaller than my head, which is 24 inches. She really doesn't have a bad look. She can do no wrong when it comes to fashion, except for the green runway. Up next, this might be such an unpopular opinion, but Miss Fame's ugliest dress runway. This one in particular really spoke to me. I thought it was bizarre that this was her idea of an ugliest dress because I thought this dress was so beautiful, totally something I'd wear. And I feel like Empire Waist is something that's really easily looked over in Western culture. The Western culture's idea of fashion is everything to be fitted, but when you look at a lot of Eastern fashion, it's not necessarily about showing off your body, it's about creating like a dynamic silhouette. As your resident ESL Asian queen, this oriental silhouette really spoke to me in many ways. Up next is Bandela Krim's Fly Runway. This look really bugged me in the best way possible. When she came out, crawling like this, like she's about to like pick some radish up on the floor. 
It's probably one of the more conceptual pieces that's been on the RuPaul's Drag Race runway. It just looks like a really well thought out, wonderful costume that's something you could see at a Cirque du Soleil show. Up next is a tie between Alaska and Roxy Andrews. The cotton candy fantasy and the licorice fringe fantasy. Both of these looks are completely different in silhouette, but obviously I love anything pink. The silhouette was really flattering in Alaska, showed off her legs really well. The colors were beautiful together, very well executed. And Roxy's candy look. Oh my god, when I first saw it on the runway, the way it moves and she didn't just think about how that outfit was going to look on her but she thought about the whole presentation on how the dress will present itself on the runway. I would sap them up like pussy. Up next is Linaysha's wallpaper fantasy. Now wallpaper is really hard to work with especially the way she constructed it. It actually looked like real fabric. It had a really stiff structure to it. So if I was her making that outfit, I would have been so nervous that the outfit could break at any moment going up the stairs in the runway. But she worked it out and the little touch with the shoe in her hair. Over. The craziest thing I've ever worn in my hair was a cage with a live bird in it. And the bird tasted delicious afterwards too. Up next is April Carrion's April Shower Look. This is a fun little outfit. She looks very feminine girly, but glamorous at the same time. And that umbrella, I kept thinking to myself, how the hell did she get that to the RuPaul's Drag Race without all the fringes getting tangled up? Up next is Courtney Act's Claus Nomi. You don't even Claus Nomi. Courtney Act is another queen where she doesn't really ever look bad. All of her runways are really polished, but this one in particular is so different from what she normally does. But I like looking at drag outfits where I have to like look at it a long time and I still can't figure out what the original material is. And this piece does that for me. To pay a tribute to a fashion icon that's kind of obscure to a lot of normal people, this is such a a plus well executed look. Up next is Acid Betty's Neon Runway. There is so much detail in this outfit. The hair, the outfit, the makeup, the shoes, the textile. Every corner you look, there is some interesting detail to look at, but it doesn't feel too much as a whole. Everything just looks like it goes together. Very cohesive. Really, really cool look, and I've never seen anything like that before. You go, Betty. Last but least, my favorite look is my mom look. And stop asking me if my mom knows that I do drag because she doesn't. Really? Yeah. What? It's been one of my dreams to showcase Korean culture and Korean outfits to a wider audience here in America. Everyone knows Chinese cheongsam and everybody knows a oh, Japanese kimono, but they have no idea what hanbok is. Empire silhouettes bold, dynamic silhouette. Fashion should be everything. Some people want to show off their body. Some people want to create interesting silhouettes and that's what I wanted to do with this look. So many outfits has gone through the runway of RuPaul's Drag Race, but these were just 18 of my favorites. I guess technically 19. I can't wait to see what's about to come in All Stars 2 and Season 9. Good luck, ladies. Break a lash. What are your favorites? Write in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to Wow Presents.